we speak about holiness or holy, we're not just talking about pure or clean. We're not just talking about pure or clean. When we are talking about holy, we're talking about separate, different, distinct, holy, dedicated, holy. So the beginning point for the believer is separation from sin. That's how your Christian journey starts. You will first of all be separated from sin. The process of being separated from sin is what Ezekiel trapped when he said that he will call them, then he will sprinkle upon them pure water. He's washing. Your field is washed. And you are separated from sin. But that's not the end of the Christian life. Many Christians, that is where they stop their Christian journey, in separation from sin. That is what we call in theology instant sanctification. What did I call it? That is, you are immediately sanctified, separated. All right? And that separation is from sin. But immediately after sanctification is immediate, sanctification now has to be continuous. It's a long life journey till you die. That continuous sanctification is now the separation unto the will of God. Are you here? So you are first of all separated from sin, and then you are now separated unto what? The will of God. The reason many Christians do not advance in their Christian journey is they are separated from sin. So their problem now is not immorality. Their problem now is not the, 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 the wickedness of this age. Their problem now is their inability to consecrate themselves fully to the will of God. So there are things that are not seen in themselves, but they are not holy. Are you here? Because they do not add any value in advancing God's agenda in your life. And these are the basic things that restrict the believer, constrict the believer, and make sure that the believer does not advance far on their journey of God. You see, bro, in the things of the spirit, fellowship is impossible without compatibility. So when God says, be ye holy, it's not a punishment, it's an invitation. Hmm. When he says, be ye holy, for I am holy, he's not trying to make life difficult for you. That thing is an access door. He's saying that if you want to have intercourse with me, this is the invitation. This is your gate pass. Because fellowship is impossible without compatibility. If you are going to know God and enjoy God, the requirement is that you yourself, you must be holy. That means you must be separated unto his will. You know, I was reading the Bible, and the Bible says that Jesus made a whip. And he came into the place where there were money changers in the temple. And he said, my house shall be called the house of prayer. My God. I began to ruminate on it. That thing, Jesus didn't say, my house shall be called the house of sacrifice. He didn't say, my house shall be called a house of teaching. As important as sacrifice is to the believer. As important as teaching, like we are doing tonight, is to the Christian journey. God didn't call his house a house of teaching. He said, my house shall be called a house of what? Why? Communion and fellowship. communion and fellowship. Your Christian life will suffer a huge setback in 2024 
if you do not make a deliberate choice to be separated unto the will of God. I need to ask you tonight, if, come, come, sir, come, 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 man of God. If this is you that is born again, and this is your friend in the office that is a non-believer, and we check the music he li you listen to, and the music he listens to, we check your internet history and check his internet history. Check the things he watches and the things you watch. Check the things he loves and the things you love. Will there be a difference? How can you be same in appetite, same in life, same in desires, and yet you say you are separated? How is it that your separation at salvation did not affect your appetites, did not affect the things that you love? You know what the average believer wants? He wants to be separated from sin, but he doesn't want to be a slave unto God. He doesn't want the will of God to control his life. So he's born again, but the same things the unbeliever enjoys are what he's pursuing. They are the cravings, the secret cravings of his soul. So when a preacher like me comes out and says, eh, how can this have been done in church? He comes out angry. When, he, when he's supposed to say, ah, thank God somebody has said, he comes angry. And when you see him angry, you'll be wondering, this person died. He's angry, you know why? There's a secret lust he wants to satisfy. So at the back of his mind, he said, no, can't spoil my market. Don't talk. So that we can secretly, this one does it publicly. He wants to do it secretly. Check the phones of the believers. All kinds of comedy, nakedness, lewd conversations, immoral jokes, jokes with sexual innuendos, jokes with madness. And the believer can find within themselves the desire to laugh. Go and check our internet history. The same immoral things the unbeliever searches for online, you will find that the believer is not exempt. The appetites are the same. Location changed, but desire is still corrupted. Now, how can you advance on your journey to know a holy God if your desire is not yet holy? You know the problem, my brother? The believer does not know what is important. Huh? He thinks that what is important is to wear a good suit. He thinks that what is important is religious activity. So he's an actor in church. Every service, his pastor can write a testimonial concerning him. If you go to his church now and ask the pastor, who is your best worker? I say, Kai! He's Johnson. He's always around. Anything you tell him to do, he will do. Everything. But meanwhile, the most important aspect of his existence is dying. He doesn't know that the real thing about his life is what happens to his soul. And without holy desires, your soul will be a slave. The way your soul finds freedom and expression to become all that it has possibility to become in God is a separation unto the will of God. And I want to show you how that journey begins. It begins with desire. Sit down. It begins with desire. You know, it's a good place to ask ourselves tonight, a very good place to ask ourselves tonight, what are your secret cravings? You know why people don't want to be separated unto the will of God? When you want to begin to get serious with God, eh, he can demand things from you that will look like punishment. He can demand your ambition. 
He can demand your future. He can demand your comfort. And many are afraid to give him all. So we are free in church, but we are slaves at home. Slaves to TV. Slaves to mobile phone. How can something they gave you to make call be controlling your life? An inanimate object is in charge of your life. It controls when you sleep. It controls your joy. Imagine, inanimate object that does not breathe has made you a desert without water. That it is Facebook you looked and saw that your classmate got married and depression. Depression has afflicted you from mobile phone, mobile phone, social media. What are your secret cravings when no man is watching? If God were to truly give you a financial breakthrough, what will you become? What will you metamorphose into a, a, on occasion of the Lord's blessing? What will you metamorphose? Check around the average Christian now. There's a corrupted craving for sex. Corrupted craving for money. Corrupted craving for fame. People want to be celebrities. People want to be popular. They want to be everywhere. Because in becoming like that, they feel that that is the way they will be able to enjoy life. Meanwhile, that craving is powered by an appetite that came from the pit of hell. What is your secret craving?